success, I've managed to fit my wobbly candle into this candlestick. If you're having a few candle troubles, whether your candles are too big for your candle holders or whether they're too small, and whether you're struggling lighting your candles, this is the video for you. Well, January has well and truly set in. I've got my back door open and even the dog doesn't want to go out. Hello there, I'm Julie from Julie Davis Flower Workshops and Flower Start, the online flower arranging classes. Now, when this video goes live, it'll be the third Monday of the new year, which apparently is the most depressing day of the year and is known as Blue Monday. So my question of the day is, what do you do when you want to lift your mood a little bit and just pull yourself out of those January blues? Now, one of the things I like to do is to light a candle in the morning. And these candles are very, very pretty. I can't remember the designer I bought them from, but I do remember that my mum gave me some Christmas money, must have been five or six years ago, and I bought these candles to use the following year. I got four of them because I thought they would make great candles in an advent crown table arrangement. But of course, because they were so precious and they came from my mum, I never actually lit them until this year. Now, I have had real trouble getting these candles to fit in my candlestick holders. They've either been too fat and they didn't fit in the candlestick holder, or the candlestick holder has been too big and the candles have wobbled around a bit, which isn't very good if you're going to light the candles. You don't want your candles toppling over. I've also had a real problem lighting these candles. And when I look at them, the wick is really, really short. So in this video, I will show you how to fit your candles into a candlestick, which is either too big or too small, and how I get around lighting the candle wick so that now I've decided to elevate my cold, dark, wintry mornings, I can actually enjoy some candlelight. My answer to everything, whether it's holding my pin holders in place or fixing my candle security in place, is museum wax, which comes in a tub and is actually reusable. These are some of the wax I've used over the festive period. But it does come with a little wooden scraper so you can scoop out fresh wax whenever you want to. But I'm not going to use this wax. I am going to take a tape. I'm going to take apart a table arrangement and use the recycled wax from that arrangement to help me out with my tricky candles. If you've been following along with my YouTube live videos on a Tuesday morning, you might recognise this arrangement. I made it live on air and it's time now for me to take it apart. So first of all, I've got those winter greens which I attached onto my board using some clay which is now dried so I can put that onto the compost heap. And then I've got my candles, which I attach to the chopping board using a tiny bit of the wax to fix these little candle holders in place. And it should be just as easy as taking my knife underneath the little holder and just flicking it off. Now, some of what you see is the drippy candle wax, so I'm just going to get rid of that. But when I scrape the bottom of the container, that will probably give me enough, enough wax to sort out my current handle problem. So it looks a bit, little bit dirty, it's definitely second hand and just flicking out those last bits of candle wax but it's going to be perfectly reusable. So I have chosen four candle holders today. This one was a gift from one of my friends we did thrifted Christmas presents this year and set ourselves a limit of two pound per person. So I actually was gifted two of these little candle holders. I've got about four of these candle holders, all thrifted at different times. And it says made in France at the bottom. And these are two much older candlesticks. I think these are probably Christmas presents, but again, probably came from the charity shop. So I've got one of each because I don't want my candles to look too static when I've got them on my kitchen window. I want a little bit of variation in height and I can achieve that by putting my candles in candlesticks, which are different heights. So the problem I've got with the first one is I think that hole is just a little bit too big for my candle. It's not, I can't push it in firm enough to get a really good grip. What I'm going to do is to take a little bit of the museum wax, 
roll it into a sausage. I only need a tiny amount. This might even be a little bit too much, I think. Just a and then wrap it around the end of my candlestick. And then when I push that in place, it'll hold much more securely. Here goes. So I'm gonna line it in place, a really firm push and a little bit of a turn. Can you see this tiny ridge of the museum wax? But I think when you look at the whole candle, you're not going to notice it. And will it hold? Well, if I hold the candlestick upside down and give it a shake, it does. Now, if you've got a situation where your candle is a little bit too big for the candle holder, you'll need to shave off some of the bottom section. And I do this using a kitchen knife. So working away from me, just taking off the barest edge at the bottom of the candle in a sort of wedge shape. So I'm taking more off at the base than I am at the side. And just go carefully with this because you don't want to make the candle too small. Otherwise, you're going to have to add in museum wax to hold everything in place. And then do exactly the same thing. And that went quite smoothly into my holder then. And make sure it's firmly wedged in place. And now my candles are wedged in place. I can light them. But I'm having a bit of trouble with this last one because the wick is so short. So I'm going to get out my scissors and trim away some of the wax, not to cut the wick, but just to expose a bit more of the length of it. Take my scissors, my sharp scissors, actually my floristry scissors here, and just carve out with my scissors. So before I actually get to that stage of cutting, I just stop a little bit because I don't actually want to cut through the wick. I'm paring off the bits of candle wax just to expose the wick slightly more than it already is. And there's a little bit of candlelight to enjoy. It might only be for five, six, seven minutes in the morning when I make myself a cup of tea and just look out of my kitchen window and see what's happening in the world. Can you see, just here, we've got some daffodils coming up next to our bird table. So one thing that I like to do is to set myself a goal. And so my goal for today was to progress the inquiries I'm making about getting one of my chairs reupholstered at home. So I am driving over to the upholsterer who lives about three or four miles away from me to have a look at her fabrics. So having picked up the fabric swatches, I thought, why don't I drop into the antique centre on the way home? So something, this, this is normally something I wouldn't do because it's a drive out of town, but it happens to be on my way back from the upholsterer. So I thought I might as well give myself a little bit of a treat. I'm not in the market for buying anything, but I do like to be inspired. It's always an education going around an antique shop. Now, I was reading an article in the latest edition of Flora magazines and it talked about wall pockets. And lo and behold, I spotted two wall pockets made by Dartmouth and I think they were £24 each. And in the same article, it said that Silvac is spelt with a large S at the front and a large C at the end. That's something I'd never spotted before. These test tubes grabbed my eye. Three test tubes for one pound. Quite often test tubes are used in very contemporary work. And if you're trying to go foam free, there are a great way of adding flowers into your arrangements without using flower foam. So I thought you might like to join me on my journey home through the narrow lanes. Being driven up to the upholsterers on the main road, I'm doing a circle loop back and coming back on the country route. It's all looking a little bit grey and there's lots of puddles at the side of the road. Ah, I'm spying catkins in the trees, so when we go out dog walking, we might come out this way tomorrow. The catkins in my garden are too high up, so I must remember to pack my secateurs. 
And of course, who can resist some fresh flowers for their mood lifting qualities? Now, if I'm totally honest, I wasn't expecting to have this box of flowers delivered when I went out this morning to see the upholsterer. Normally, I make sure that at the end of the month, I check on the calendar from Freddie's Flowers when my next delivery is due. And because of all the New Year excitement, I forgot to uncheck my delivery dates. So this box of flowers is quite a surprise, but isn't that even better if you get something that is a lovely surprise, even though you're actually paying for it yourself. And of course, it's not always about going out and spending money to keep yourself happy. But if you know that having fresh flowers brings you some joy, you don't have to spend a fortune. Go to the supermarket and buy a 2 dollars mixed bunch. And if you haven't got money to spend, but you do have a garden, how about going out and looking and seeing what's growing in your garden? Perhaps you've got some spring bowls, some daffodils that are just showing the new tips of growth. Dig them up, put them in the container, and then you've got your own indoor bulbs. And because it's going to be slightly warmer in your house than it is outdoors, they will come into bloom much quicker. And you'll have a lovely succession of planting. Enjoy your spring flowers a few weeks ahead of time indoors, and then they'll get replaced by the naturally growing spring flowers out in your garden. So anyway, let's get on with these flowers. I did have a look, a quick peek inside the box, and I know it's all white flowers. So I've got myself a white jug, which I've already filled up with water. So let's see what we've got. So I am going to unpack the boxes. I've got loads and loads of videos about unboxing Freddy's flowers. So if you're interested in those, let me know in the comments, and I will try to remember to leave a link to those videos in the show notes under this one. And and if you live in Great Britain, I will leave a discount code as well. I think it either gives you your first box free or your first two boxes half price. I'm not quite sure. And again, I'll leave that discount code in the show notes underneath this video. So in here, I have got some twisted willow. So I know that if I plant these in the garden, they will actually grow. They'll start to, to root in my vase probably. I've also got some small leaved um, eucalyptus. This looks like um, eucalyptus parvifolia. So I'm going to get that in the vase first. And then rather interestingly, I have got some tulips which are actually in flower and they have got the bulbs attached. Blue thistle for a little bit of contrast. There are some bloom chrysanthemums which come in these protective net cuttings. So they will spring into life. I've got three of those and then some white snapdragons. These are drooping slightly, but that's only because they've been out of water a little while while they've been delivered to me. And I'm searching around at the bottom of the box for my flower food. So that's going to be the first thing I put into my container. So I'm going to take this vase upstairs to the little occasional table that I've got in my bedroom. And I'll show you the fabric samples I've collected from the wholesaler. Actually, I've just had a thought. Another thing while I'm here is I try and lift myself out of the winter blues by creating order out of chaos. And as you can see behind me, my flower arranging bookshelf is getting ever slightly out of control. I don't want to tackle all three shelves at once, but what I could do is take down my books from the to the bottom shelf and go through them and just try and restack them. I quite clearly haven't got enough bookshelf space. They're piling up all around me. What I'm thinking though is I might divide my books into teaching books, so reference books that I can use in my classes, and I'll probably put those on the bottom shelf so they're easily accessible. I'm thinking also that many of the books I've got aren't so much flower arranging books, they're more lifestyle books. So with spring coming ahead, I thought I might choose two, three or four of them just to put on my coffee table so I can flick through them over an evening and be inspired. I'm just going to head straight in here and create even more chaos as I work. So here goes. I've got little bits and pieces stuffed in the side here. A colour wheel, always very useful if you want to know what goes with what. But I'm trying not to look at the things, just get it all off the shelf and then have a look and see how I can reorder things. There's always little um, rip-outs from magazines. Presumably, I wanted to make watermelon lemonade at some stage. I think I'm going to throw that away. I've never made it. <laughs> I 
I think I may, might have made a rod from my own back here as the pile of books tumbles to one side. But this will just take me 10 minutes. I've got 10 minutes to spare. And if I was doing this without filming, it may well be that I might put on a podcast or watch one of my favorite YouTubers to keep me company. So there's, there's a system. So um, I'm gonna finish off doing this shelf. And as I say, just do it one shelf at a time or set a timer and just say I'm going to work for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes and don't try and get overwhelmed with it. So I've now created a little bit of a mess. So I'm going to tidy up my mess and at least then I've made progress. I have made order out of disorder. And here is my little bit of luxury for the bedroom. This is the chair that I want to get reupholstered. You can see here that it's originally leather at the top with a little fleur-de-lis symbol that has been, the leather's ripped off over time, quite exposed. And at some point, the bottom of the chair has been covered in vinyl. And this is my shortlisted fabric. We've got a little bit of red in our bed linens and a little bit of red in the curtains too. So I thought I would create something with a contrast. I didn't want a floral because that would clash with the curtains. I didn't want anything plain and I don't particularly like stripes. So I'm going to live with this for a few days and see what I think. What do you reckon? Let me know in the comments. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video about how I try and combat the January blues. I love having candlelight in the morning. Create number two, I try and create order out of disorder. So once I finish filming this video, I'm going to tackle bookshelves number two and three down in my workshop. And number three, I like to have a to-do list. Well, not so much a to-do list as a goal that I want to set myself. And it always feels so good when you've achieved something. So I'm feeling quite pleased with myself. I've finally been to visit the upholsterer to get some samples of new fabric for my chair here in the bedroom. And on the way home, a little bit of a bonus because I got off my bottom and did something. I had the opportunity of going to the antique shop, which I would never have done. And yes, I did buy myself six vintage test tubes for the grand total of two pounds. And if you are going to make a to-do list, don't make it too long and don't stress yourself if you're not able to tick the things off. And in fact, my sister gave me a really good piece of advice when I was at home with my young baby. And she suggested that whatever was on my list today, make sure I didn't accomplish all of it in order that I had a purpose and a reason to get out of the house the following day. And tip number four is fresh flowers. So while I was arranging my fresh flowers, I felt, really felt that I was giving myself a treat, not only because I'd forgotten that I'd ordered the flowers, but because I've put them in my bedroom, which is somewhere I don't normally have fresh flowers. And you'll know if you're a flower arranger or a gardener or a crafter, but just by keeping yourself busy, by being totally absorbed in a creative activity, that just gives you a little bit of mind space. And if your mind keeps going back to those worries, you can push them out of the way and concentrate on what you're doing in the moment. And my fifth tip is really to do more of what makes you happy. I've got a really good book I can recommend for you. It's called Happiness at Home by Gretchen Rubin. And I think probably that is my number one tip for you. If you are suffering with the January blues and you're feeling a little bit directionless, you need to build up your resilience. Do more of what you enjoy doing. Give yourself a pat on the back when you've achieved a goal or something on your to-do list and have something that you can go-to that is really, really absorbing to you, like a creative hobby, of which flower arranging is one. I'm just looking at my flowers actually now, those droopy. <laughs> and those flowers have been in water for about half an hour and already that droopy stem has gone more perky and upright. So perhaps that's the moral of the story. Invest more of what you need, in the case of my flowers, some water and some flower food, and remember to feed yourself too. Let me know in the comments whether any of my suggestions resonate with you and what little tips and tricks you use to beat the January blues. That's all for me for now and I'll see you again next time.